Rosa-Dorfman disease um, uh, is also called uh, sinus histocytosis with massive lymphadenopathy. It is one of the rare histocytoses, which are disorders characterized by the overproduction of a type of uh, immune cell called histocytes. And these cells can accumulate and they can invade organs like lymph nodes, skin, and other internal organs. It's called Rosario Dorfman because it was first described as an entity in 1969 by doctors Rosai and Dr. Dorfman. And they found that these histocytes that are not typically the same as the most common type of histocytosis, which is LCH, these histocytes have different features. They are negative for the markers for LCH, but they have other markers that can distinguish them. And usually, Rosai Dorfman is more common in children and young adults, although it can affect older adults, especially when it's involved in the brain. Males seem to be more affected than females, and people from African descent seems to be more prone. Rosai Dorfman, which I would refer to as RDD, to make things easier, has also been reported after treatment for acute leukemia, Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which are disorders or malignancies of the blood. And it has also been reported together with other autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and Alps syndrome. The cause of Rosario Dorfman is really not known. But we believe that there's a process involving cytokine-mediated migration of monocytes, which are a type of white blood cells, that would cause the accumulation of these histocytes. And these cytokines can be interleukin-1, 6, or TNF-alpha. And it is thought that these are the cytokines that produce the symptoms. Now, what are the triggers for these cytokines? We don't really know for sure. There have been previous hypotheses that viral infection can be the cause, but nothing has really been proven. Other possibilities is that sometimes uh, cancers of the blood, as I mentioned, or other disorders like uh, lupus or rheumatoid arthritis can be the trigger, but nothing has really been proven. So Rosa Dorfman is usually diagnosed through a biopsy, which is um, a sample taken from a lymph node or skin or other involved organ. And with the biopsy, we can see these histocytes that have these markers on the surface of them. One of them is CD68, another one is called S100. And another one on, on the biopsy that can help also distinguish Rosa Dorfman is that Sometimes you have big histocytes eating up lymphocytes and other cells. We need also to determine the extent of the disease in the body. So not only we want to see the result of the biopsy in the affected organ, but we want to rule out that other organs in the body can be affected. So for that, we would need to do a an x-ray of the chest and sometimes a CAT scan, an ultrasound of the abdomen. And depending on symptoms, we may need to do also a bone scan or a, an MRI of the brain as well to rule out bony involvement or involvement uh, in the brain. The treatment of RDD is uh, different according to the extension of the disease. In many cases, when the disease is involving only a, an enlargement of the lymph nodes of the neck, these can usually be without symptoms. And for these patients, if the nodes are not causing any problems, any uh, difficulty breathing, or they're not life-threatening, we would usually just observe. 
But in some cases, the nodes can be quite big and they can cause symptoms. Or you may have involvement of vital organs, such as the liver or the brain. And for that, we will talk about treatment in a minute. The many treatments for Rosai Dorfman, one of them could be surgery, but usually surgery is usually limited to biopsy of the lesion. Although in some cases, if you have brain lesions with Rosai Dorfman, surgery can be an option. Radiotherapy is usually uh, not used and it's limited only to rare cases where there is a uh, a, a vital organ uh, being compromised. For example, if there's a rosy dopamine around the eyes, maybe causing uh, vision uh, compromise, then radiotherapy can be indicated. Although we prefer not to do it, especially in young children. One of the most common drugs used in RDD are steroids, such as dexamethasone or prednisone, which can be helpful in reducing the sizes of the nodes the problem with steroids is that they can weaken the immune system of the body, and therefore it can make someone prone to infections. And once you stop them, the disease can come back. Other drugs such as chemotherapy, unfortunately chemotherapy has shown conflicting and discouraging results. There are drugs that have shown to be effective in some patients, but not effective in other patients. Sometimes treatment of this disorder with an LCH-like therapy can be helpful in some patients, but not in others. Some drugs recently were found to be effective uh, are called targeted therapies, such as uh, imatinib or Gleevec and rituximab. Rituximab would target, uh, it's a monoclonal antibody that would target the CD20 on the surface of the cells. And more recently, new drugs that will slow the production of cytokines, which are thought to be the cause of many symptoms, have been found to be effective. One of them is called cladrobin, and the other one more recently called clofarabine. These have been shown to be effective in patients who have resistant or multiply relapsing disease. And we don't treat every patient the same. Other drugs that have been used have included thalidomide or interferon alpha, or even an antiviral medication, acyclovir, however, with conflicting results. But again, it is possible that every patient with Rosario can respond differently to a different drug. And in general, we don't treat everybody. We would treat only patients who have a compromise of vital organ or patients who have really bad quality of life. For example, persistent fevers or being unwell for many months or nodes that are dangerously causing compression or patients who relapse multiply with the disease, then chemotherapy might be indicated. So the long-term effects of Rosario Dorfman can vary dependent on the severity of the disease at presentation, whether it recurred or not, and whether the patient received treatment with chemotherapy or radiotherapy or not. So the late effects of chemotherapy depend usually on the type of chemotherapy drugs used. For example, late effects of steroids might, might be um, some effect on the bones, causing fragility of the bones, um, or maybe um, muscle pain, uh, or in some cases, especially if these are children, when they get the drugs, it could be um, after several exposure with steroids, it can cause a short stature in some patients. If you're using drugs like anthracyclines or um, specifically a drug called downrubicin, in the future, we have to follow heart function because these drugs can affect the heart muscle. And certainly, uh, the effects of this drug can be both acute, which means immediate, or late after many years. And if someone has had radiotherapy, depending on the organ, then also late effects of radiotherapy 
can be um, significant many years after, especially if, uh, the ch if it was a child who was the patient receiving radiotherapy, and if especially if it, if it was radiotherapy to the brain. Uh, patients with Rosario Dorfman um, can have many years of uh, remissions, which means no symptoms, alternated perhaps with periods where there is worsening of the symptoms. And um, some patients actually, especially those who have involvement of the brain or the liver, have actually worse prognosis. And there have been uh, uh, cases who died from involvement of the brain or the liver, unfortunately. So will the disease go away? This is a really good question. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, patients will have uh, periods where uh, many years the symptoms are gone um, and they are prone to reactivation of their disease. And in some cases, uh, the disease um, may just go away after many years. It is hard to predict um, how is the patient is going to behave in, in the, in the uh, upcoming years. And it's hard to predict who will have worse outcome than others. Um, but it, it is known that patients who present usually with just a lymph node that is enlarged um, without any other involvement of uh, internal organs, or if it's affecting the skin only, uh, then these patients usually would lead a normal life. If in vital organs are compromised, such as the liver or the lungs or the brain, um, then these patients are prone to receive different therapies, uh, and they may respond or they may not respond to treatment. And in those patients, um, the outcome is, is hard to predict.